Hey everybody, this is Roy Canaday, and this is a how to play for my game, Last Light. So I wanna go through and show everybody all the little parts of how to play the game so that way you can get it to your table even easier. Last Light is a fast-paced Space Forex game right before the heat death of the universe. You're all gonna be different alien races trying to gather light right before the last star goes out. The first player to 20 light will win the game. So let's just get right into setup. So the rulebook has setups for all different player accounts. Today we're going to focus on the four player setup, which will kind of show you where all of the planets and asteroids and colony ships for all the players go with a key down here at the bottom. It'll look kind of like this when you're done, but let's go through all of that. First set up the baseboard with the star, center star planet peg coming out of the middle of the board here in the middle of your table. And then you're going to take the outer ring here. Um, there's a side that has six on it and a side that has 12 on it. This is based on player count to keep the board tight depending on the number of players. For four players we're going to actually be doing a 12 here so it has enough space for everything to go here and you can line up this uh, little thing here with one of the sides there and then also with the inner ring planet or the inner ring area here you have a side with five spaces on it, and a side with three spaces on it. For the four player count game, we do the side with five spaces, and I'll just line both of these up here, kind of facing away all to one side. It doesn't matter too much, but that's kind of how that works. And then you will take the star, um, this is the light up star version of the game, but um, this, uh, you can pop it right here in the middle, and that will kind of hold everything together for your game. And then you're gonna take your planets. These are kind of like the resin upgrade ones, so yours might look slightly different than this, but you're gonna take these and then you'll just kind of randomly put them out on the board. It doesn't matter too much kind of how you put them. Um, but yeah, you will basically be looking the whole time with your uh, setup instructions here for four player setup. Um, you'll see that uh, it shows all of the spaces that the planet goes. So in the inner ring here, you're going to have three planets. And then on the outer ring, you're basically gonna have a planet in every other space. So these Things here are where we're showing indicating planets. And then also you're going to have a planet here and here, a planet here and here, and then asteroids kind of in between. So um, let's do a little bit of that. So now that we have all of our planets placed out, we're also going to be placing out our asteroids kind of in between everything. Um, these are cardboard versions if you have the retail version of the game, but deluxe version comes with these nice plastic ones. Um, but you will place those out kind of in between the stuff. This keeps the board tight based on player count and there'll be more asteroids with um, less players and less asteroids with more players. Then we have three different types of exploration tokens here. We have the rare exploration tokens, which are mostly going to be in the center of the star system. Then you have the common ones, which would normally be beside people's home uh, colony ship sectors and then around the outer ring of the planet. And then we have these empty space exploration tokens. So we will place those out as well based on whether you see red, blue or empty space exploration tokens, putting them in the correct place based on the player count. And there you go, everything should be ready for the board setup. Give each player a ship board so they can have that. And then each player gets the ships of their color. Um, there are small, medium, and large. And I actually like to place these out because this corresponds to small, this corresponds to medium, and this corresponds to large. And then they put their colony ship in their colony ship sector back here on their corner of the board based on player setup. They will start with an extractor, which are these things here, on the common space here, which we just kind of set it beside there to kind of show um, that you have an extractor there. And then they start with one small ship in the colony ship sector. Each player will also start with a common resource, which is the grayish resource or clear, however you wanna call it. Um, and they'll start with one of those. And you'll also shuffle up all the aliens and then deal two to each player. And out of those two aliens, they will choose one to keep and then get rid of the other. But we should probably save that part until after um, everyone ha knows a little bit more about the game so they can learn how their alien works a little bit better. Um, you're each going to have six action cards, which is kind of the lifeblood of this game. You're gonna pass those out to each player as well. And then also make sure to pass out the players their four planetary achievements. They will choose one of these at the beginning of the game, but you should probably also have them choose this after they know the game a little bit better as well. Each player 
player is going to start with their graveyard. You're going to make sure to put it on the correct player count side. There's a side for two players and a side for three plus. So everybody will place that on the three plus side as well. And then you kind of have your player area. So each player should have their player area set up and ready to start the game. Set the combat dice beside the main board so that all players can have access to it when they need to get into combat. Also take all of the tech cards, give them a really good shuffle, and then pass one of these tech cards out so each player will start with an unresearched tech in their hand so they can put that with all of the rest of their player board and things like that. Then you're gonna give the first player marker to the player who most recently looked at the stars. Um, the first player doesn't matter that strongly in this game because most of the actions are simultaneous, but this will be used if there's any conflict in actions, um, basically going from player turn order, and this mostly matters during the command action. Place all of your resource tokens beside the board. I kind of like to put them in a specific order as well. The gray ones are common resources leading up into um, uncommon resources, which are purple. And then the orange ones are gold, are rare resources all the way up into light. You have um, ones and fives of light as well. And then you also have your damage markers as well. So just put these in an area where all the players can easily reach them. Hand out an exploration card, player aid to each player. This will help as you're exploring to know what the icons on all the different exploration tokens are. That is how everything is set up. Make sure each player has a common resource. They should have a small ship in their starting area. They should have an extractor on the common space. They should have two aliens dealt out to them and then also a random tech card out of the deck. And it looks like we're ready to learn how to play the game. Higher player count games, there are setups all the way up to eight players. That is if you have the infinity expansion for the game, which actually includes these wings that are gonna kind of go off to the side of the board that you'll see that you kind of set up around the board and it shows you the planets and all the different setups for every single player count. So now we're ready to learn how to play Last Light that everything is set up. Last Light is a simultaneous action game. That means you're gonna have a hand of these six action cards and you're gonna be choosing one of those action cards all at the same time. Once all the players have chosen their action card, um, and sometimes in higher player count games, especially we do like a thumbs up to make sure everybody's ready. And once everyone is ready around the board, we're going to reveal those action cards and do them at the same time. You've kind of been engineered from the ground up to have as little conflict of like action as possible. If there's ever any conflict of action, first you'll go down the order number of the different cards, lower cards would trigger first. Um, and then if there's any other conflict of action, you would go to the player turn order marker. Um, there is basically very little conflict of action except when it comes to the command card, which we will get to in a little bit. But I will teach you how all of these action cards work. And once you know that, you'll basically know how to play the game. The first action card we're gonna talk about here is research. What research does is allows you to gain new technologies to make your alien race more asymmetrical from the others. So when you play the research card, first you're gonna check if you have at least four built technologies. If you had four built technologies out, you'll be able to gain a light. And uh, for each multiple of four, you would gain an additional light. Of course, at the start of the game, you're not gonna have four built, so you wouldn't gain anything. But then the second part of this allows you to draw three technology cards. You're gonna look at these technology cards and you will be able to keep two of them for your unresearched tech and then discard the other one to a face up discard pile. Out of any of the technologies that you have chosen to keep, you'll be able to pay for them using their resource cost. If you look in the middle of the card here, this uh, warp drive would cost a common resource to play. So the cost to play the card is in the middle. Um, there are three different types of technology. There are ship ability technologies. Ship abilities will go on your ships in different areas. If it's here, all of your small ships would have the warp drive ability. If it's here, all of your medium ships would have that ability. And if it's here, all of your large ships would have that ability. You can only have one ship ability for each size ship. You can replace these if you want to, but then you're going to be discarding that to the discard pile and putting a new ship ability down. Um, so not very efficient. But most of the time, ship abilities are going to give you different abilities for your ship in combat, which are going to be based off rolling the ship ability symbol, which ship ability symbol is on two different sides of the die. It looks like a little card there. And if you roll that, you'll be able to trigger this ability. Like with warp drive here, you pay a common to get it out um, and you only pay that one time and then it's there for the rest of the game. Then if you roll this, you'd be able to then exhaust this card. Anytime you exhaust a card, you would flip those cards face down. 
and you won't be able to use those cards until you play the refresh action, which we'll talk a, bit, a little bit about later. Um, and if you pay a common resource, you could move that ship to anywhere on the board. So say you had brought out a medium ship back here, you could then uh, warp drive if you were in combat and fought somebody and actually rolled that symbol, you would then be able to move it anywhere on the board. Um, so let's talk about the other types of technology. The next type of technology is ship mods. Ship mods basically upgrade the stats of your ship. So these will, you'll pay the cost on there. This would be a common and an uncommon, which would be a gray and a purple there. Um, and then you would pay that to the bank, and then you would be able to just tuck this underneath. Um, the small ships can have one mod, the medium ships are allowed to have two mods, and your large ships are allowed to have three mods. Of course, putting the mods on them upgrade the stats of that specific type of ship. Um, if it was here, then basically all of your small ships would then take two hits to knock out. So if you look here, you have three or four different types of icons here. This is your range. So this is how far you can um, shoot. Normally you can only shoot into the same space unless you have a mod that upgrades that. There is the little square here is combat. That's how many dice you roll in combat. The little shield here is your shield. Um, so with this mod, you would get plus one to your shield. So normally your ships would only have one shield for your small ships. This would make it so your small ships have two shields. So they take two hits to knock out in combat. And then the last one here is movement. The little pips under here show that you only have one movement for your small ships. All of your ships only have one movement at the start of the game. So that is how ship mods work. You have upgrades for all of those. And then the last one here is bombardment. That is how you actually destroy extractors. Only your large ships start the game with bombardment. You can get bombardment from medium and and small ships if you find the correct technology. Basically anything you can think of is inside this technology deck. And then the last type of card here is a civilization technology. These just kind of go into play in your play area and you can just kind of put them wherever and then they'll activate when applicable. This would cost an uncommon to actually play which would be another purple there. And then um, when you uh, Basically, this one is whenever your ships are destroyed, you can exhaust this card to bring them back to your colony ship sector instead of them going to your opponent's graveyard. There are all sorts of different civilizations. Like say this is the technology that you started the game with. This one costs a rare. You could actually even exhaust this card just to gain a light, which of course is the point of the game. Um, but yeah, so the first half of research allows you to gain those. The second half allows you to play any of the ones that you have on research so that if you did this on your first turn or one of your early turns, you would draw three, keep two of those, and then you would have the two that you kept and then the one you started the game with randomly to be able to play out of there. So that is how research works, allowing you to get all sorts of cool different special abilities for your aliens. Another couple notes here on timing is that whenever you have any civilization technologies that can exhaust at any time, um, then you will either use them before or or after your action. So say you've chosen your card, you flip your card over, and then you could trigger your different technologies to be able to use them before actually triggering that action. Or you can choose to use them after you have completely finished your action for the turn. Um, so you want to make sure to um, do those before or after. They won't trigger in the middle of an action. So say things like research, and I researched and actually played out on my turn economy. Um, this would allow me to exhaust this to gain a rare. I can't then immediately exhaust this to gain the rare. My research card would have to be completely finished before I can exhaust this card and then gain the rare. Um, so that's just a little timing on how these work. Also, any of these civilization cards will happen at the time of the actual action card you played. So if you have a thing that allows you to move and things like that, it'll happen before other people's movement with command. And you need to actually declare that you're doing those things before those movements happen just to fix all of those tricky timing situations that can happen in a simultaneous game. The next action I want to talk about here is mine. Mine is the main way you gather resources during the game. So whenever you play mine, you're going to be gathering resources for each of your mining constructs. So anywhere you have extractors, you're going to be looking and seeing what resource they would actually produce. So you start the game with an extractor here on the common space. Whenever you play your mine action card, you're going to be able to just gain a common and you'll be able to put it over with your alien civilization and then you'll have an extra common. If you had an extractor out on a planet, let's say you had put an extractor on this planet here beside you, um, you would have already had flipped this over. Um, you would look at whatever is in the dark, like blackish area of the thing there to show what you would get. 
Anything that's listed in the gray area is an event that happens immediately when the token is flipped, which we'll talk a little bit when we talk about exploration. But if you had this situation, you would gain a common for having an extractor on this planet. You would also gain another common for having an extractor on your colony ship. Also, you can build extra extractors on your colony ship here. You can have an uncommon space and a common space as well. So if you built a second extractor on here, when you played mine, you would gain a common for the planet. You would gain a common for the um, colony ship and you would gain an uncommon for the colony ship, giving you more and more resources to kind of build up your civilization. Um, you can also um, get planets that are closer to the middle here. The common planets are going to mostly produce the uh, common and uncommon resources. So this would produce an uncommon. The rare planets are red. They're mostly going to produce rare resources and light. So this one will produce rare, and this one over here will produce light. So if you're able to build your extractors on some of those rarer planets, you'll get much better resources when you play your mine action. The next action we wanna talk about here is construct. So what construct does is it allows you to build ships in your colony ship sector is the left side of the card. Every card I should mention does the left side first and then the right side, which could matter for timing on aliens and things like that. Um, but whenever you construct ships, you're gonna look at the ship cost here. So if you look at your shipboard here, the small ships cost a common, the medium ships cost a common and uncommon, and your large ships cost a rare. So if you had, um, a bunch of different resources here you could pay a common and anything you build is always going to go back here in your colony ship sector so everything is going to be coming from your little mothership and spreading out from there um, so you can build as many ships as you have resources to do so if you had a rare as well you go ahead and throw one of those large ships out there also um, and your mediums would cost a common and an uncommon the second half of the construct action allows you to actually build your extractors out on the board. So whenever you do that, this says you can build an extractor on a planet that you have annexed. What annexed means is that you are the only player there. So if you are trying to say you have gone out here and you have already explored this planet and flipped it over, um, and taken all the appropriate actions for that. Um, if you were the only person there, when you play your construct action, the second half would allow you to build one extractor there. The extractors don't have any actual cost to them, but you can only build one extractor each time you play the card. Also, if there is an enemy ship in that same space, then neither of you can build an extractor there until one of you peacefully moves on or blows the other one up in combat. But if you're both sitting at the same space, you cannot choose that space to actually build an extractor on. Um, so that is how you build out more of your extractors, being able to basically gain more resources and gain control of more planets to be able to build up your civilization. The next action card here is trade. Trade basically allows you to upgrade your resources so you can have better resources to build better technology and better ships. So when you play trade, you can pick two things off of the trade action here. You can also pick the same thing twice. So you can either gain a common resource, which is the gray ones there. You can turn to common into an uncommon. You can turn to uncommon into a rare or turn to rare into a light, which light is the point of the game. Of course, if you get to 20, then you actually win. And also if you notice the air go both ways here so you can actually downgrade your resources as well because you need the specific color of resources to be able to build your ships and technology you can't spend a more expensive resource to pay for a cheaper one you would have to downgrade it with the trade action first and then also after you're completely done with doing trade you're then going to choose an opponent and they're going to gain a common from the supply so maybe two different players play trade on the same turn you can say oh you can have a free common I'll have a free common that way we're both kind of doing better or maybe you want to give it to the person that's on the the other side of the galaxy from you so that way you know they're not going to be near you super soon or maybe you want to uh, give it to someone who's probably not who's winning the game but hey you could say here have this common don't attack you but none of that stuff is binding so good luck with that so anytime you play any of these action cards they're going to kind of go face down in front of you so that all the players can see what you've actively played and you can't play them again until you actually play this next action which is your refresh card refresh is going to do several things on here it's going to unexhaust all of your cards so if you had any alien ability that actually exhausts it would unexhaust that and then any of your technologies that you have that have exhausted will unexhaust so you could then use them again and then all of your action cards are going to go back to your hand so you can use those again 
um, the refresh will actually stay out on the table when you do that. Um, and then also, if you have any ships that have any damage on them, any of that damage will go away. So that way your ships are back healed so they can get back into the combat. But do note, whenever you play your refresh card, your current refresh card stays out on the table. Um, then also, um, the next part of the refresh card here is the claim action. So the claim action is the main way you gain light during the game, and this is basically the area control way to gain light. Of course, getting to 20 light lets you win, um, but you're going to basically look over here, and if you have an extractor on an outer planet that is not blockaded, that means that there are no enemy ships there. If there was an enemy ship there, it would be blockaded, so you wouldn't be able to gain light. But if you have an on an outer planet, you will gain one light. If you have one on an inner planet, say this had flipped over and you had controlled this planet in here, you're closer to the star in the middle of the galaxy and you're gonna gain two light each time you play this refresh card. So the more and more extractors you get out there, when you play this refresh card, you can get more and more light. Um, and once again, if somebody is running away with the game with a ton of light, you want to come in there and blockade them so that way you have a ship presence in their area so that way they're not going to get that light when they refresh. So slowing people down from gaining light is a good way to make sure you're still in the game before they get to 20. Um, but yeah, and another interesting thing about refresh is the fact that it doesn't actually come back into your hand. There's a few things that happen with this. Um, one thing to note is that there's an icon here that shows that no actions that bring action cards back into your hand can bring refresh back into your hand. So refresh is always stuck to the table until everybody refreshes. Once everybody has played their refresh card out on the table, a few things are going to happen at the end of that round. Um, once that is there, you basically finish all of the movement, all the combat, all of everybody's turns. And then after that, at the very end of that turn, after everybody is done, then all of the players are going to do a few things. They're going to all take the refresh card back into their hand, the first player marker will move to the next player, and then the board itself will rotate. So I'll kind of show how this works. So basically, you have these little circles here, um, and the board, so say this guy's in here, the board is going to basically, this circle will move to the next circle here, basically 90 degrees, so the center one moves 90 degrees relative to that, and then the large circle is going to move to the next circle here, basically going 45 degrees, making the center circle spin even more. So the inner planets move a lot faster around than the outer planets. This is an area control game where the areas you control start to float in front of your opponents as the game goes along. And then also when that actually happens, if any player has ships in the very middle space, they will gain one light for each ship that's there. They're basically using their ships to harvest light directly from the star in the middle of the galaxy, but the other players aren't gonna like that because if you let someone sit there too long or after a couple refreshes, they're definitely gonna be running away from the game. So you definitely wanna go in there, make sure to knock out your opponents from the middle so that way you can be the one in the middle gaining all the light. So I wanna note is when the board rotates with the refresh card, you only take the refresh card back. You play refresh to get all of your other cards back. When all the refreshers are back, you get just the refresh back. So make sure to remember that. Also, when the board rotates, you don't actually gain any light for the planets. You only gain light for having stuff in the middle. You gain light for the planets when you play your refresh card on your own turn. Um, and another thing to note is you don't have to play out all of your cards before playing refresh. Choosing when to play refresh and not to play refresh is a very pivotal part of the game. And sometimes you might want to play this card just because your planets are currently not blockaded. Um, because it's like, oh, they would have to move in to stop me. I'm going to play refresh now to gain that light before my opponent stops me. So refresh is definitely one of the most important cards in Last Light. And timing it just right is very important for your play. The last action I want to talk about here is Command. So Command is a very different card just by the fact that if multiple players play Command on the same turn, you could have to do it in turn order. So once everybody has selected their cards and played, if multiple people play Command, you would check and see if it's possible at all for both of those player ships to move into the same space. If they're on opposite sides of the galaxy, like at the beginning of the game, you can play command and kind of do it in turn order or just do it at the same time. But if two players can move into the same space, like in this situation, if yellow and blue had both played command, they could both move to this planet or maybe move to this space up here to try to maybe get an exploration token. Um, and because of that, you basically do it in turn order. So if red was the first player, yellow would first move their ships and they would be able to do all their exploration and such like that. 
and then um, Blue would then be able to move their ships. So with Command, whenever you move, you're move normally just moving across the little glowing lines here. You can't move into spaces with asteroids. Those are basically not spaces on the game. Whenever you move into a new planet area, you're going to flip that token over and basically do what it says on the gray area there. You will check your um, exploration um, player aid to help you with that. Um, this one has a little ship symbol on it that says, hey, gain a small ship in this sector. So if you have a small ship, you would be able to put it there. If not, you at least stopped your opponent from getting that exploration. Also, whenever you move into a space with an empty space exploration token, you will flip those over and immediately do what they say. Hey, this one gives you one light. You're one closer to winning the game. These will be removed from the board and are just one-time use things that are there when you move into those spaces. Um, once all the ships have moved, like say we did end up moving in here, um, then we will have combat. So an interesting thing about Last Light is combat is asynchronous. So that means that only the players that played the command card get to roll dice in combat. So if blue played command and yellow did not, they would be able to roll dice against yellow and um, yellow would not be doing any defensive rolls back, but they will play their command on a future turn, maybe getting a jump on blue back. Um, but do note when you're rolling, um, your small ships, let's take a look at your shipboard here. Your small ships are going to roll one dice in combat and take one hit to knock out. Um, and they have a range of the current space that they're in of one. Um, and then the medium ships have two dice in combat and take two hits to knock out, still only attacking the same space. And then the large ships have um, attack the same space, three dice in combat, three hits to knock out, but they also have that bombardment, which is the only way to get rid of extractors. Um, so um, when you're doing this, if you're doing a small ship versus small ship, say blue moved in here and attacked yellow, um, they would roll the dice. Basically what you're trying to do is you're trying to get hits in combat. So the hits are the little burst symbols here. Um, you only need one hit to knock out a small one. There are two sides with regular hits on it. There's a side with a special ability on it, which we talked about having cool special abilities to upgrade your ships to be able to have cool things to trigger in combat, all sorts of different things like stealing resources or taking action cards back. Lots of cool abilities you can get out of that technology deck. Um, then there's a side on here that is a hit and a special ability, so that would count as both. Um, and then there's a side that is a miss on here. You don't want to roll that. That one's lame. Um, and then there's a side that is a hit and a reroll, so basically exploding dice. So this is a burst, so if you get that, you would hit, and then you would roll either this die again, or sometimes if you have extra copies of dice, you can roll a separate dice to then be able to tally up all the amount of your hits. Once you have decided, um, all the hits you have, say there are multiple people in this area and only blue had attacked, blue would then decide where to assign their damage. They'd say, oh, I'm going to hit red or I'm going to hit yellow. Um, and a lot in this game is about trying to make sure the leader isn't running away with the game, so probably you should be targeting whoever has the most light. So you would then take that unit and put it into your graveyard if you have destroyed it. Um, if you have at least four of your opponent's units in your graveyard, you're going to be harvesting the light out of those units. So you will then return those to those players and gain a light. But um, also extractors, if they're destroyed, they will go here as well. And if an opponent, an opponent is allowed to build ships from your graveyard, so say yellow had played their um, construct action, they could actually pay a common to you to build that extractor out, which is even more important when you have their larger ships and they'd have to pay a rare resource to actually build that out of your graveyard. But that does keep you from getting that um, light when you get to four, and it does actually give you those resources though as well. So it's kind of like a give and take as you're capturing your opponents on those graveyards. Um, and that is another way to gain light. So of course the person that gets to 20 wins the game. Also, if there are multiple people in combat, you're going to the player whose turn it is, who's closest to first player who played command, will choose the sectors that actually activate. If there are a ton of combats going on all around the board, you can also use these attention tokens to be able to say, oh, we have already done combat in this area. We don't need to worry about going back to there. Also do note that combat is actually a May ability, so you don't actually have to fight someone. Do note that if blue played command here and they were going to attack this purple ship and they rolled any number of hits, so say they did a burst here and then they did another hit, they would put a couple damage on that ship if they weren't able to fully knock it out. And that damage would stay with that ship underneath it um, until that player refreshes but then another player say yellow plays command on their next turn they could move in and roll their couple dice and be able to knock that ship out 
Um, and if whoever does the last damage to a ship will be the one who puts that in their graveyard. And just another reminder is after everybody has played their refresh, those go back to their hand and the board rotates. And that is when that happens, then each player that uh, is in the middle space there, so say blue and yellow were both there, they would both get one light. So that is all six of your action cards. So hopefully that gives you a good idea of how all the different actions work as you play the game. And if you have any issues, just make sure to read out how the card works for each of those actions. Do note if there's any timing conflict, you go from the lowest number to the highest number there. So that means refresh will always happen and someone can gain their light from claim before someone can come in and stop them with command. Also note that you do not have to play out all of these action cards each turn before refreshing. A big part of the game is choosing which of these action cards to skip. Maybe you don't have enough resources to do research right now. Maybe command isn't the right thing you need to be doing right now. Maybe you want to focus on other things, but always getting towards the middle and gaining the light and trying to refresh at the right time to gain your light or research at the right time after you've played enough technology to gain your light is a very important of part of the game. So racing to get that 20. Right now that you know how all the action cards work, I'm gonna talk about a couple other things here. One of those is the planetary achievements. This is kind of the planet terrain type that your alien species like. So say you go for the rocky red planets, you need to control at least two um, red planets, then you can reveal this. At the beginning of the game, you're gonna be of course choosing one of these and discarding the other three. And if you chose red, you would need to control two red planets. And control is actually denoted by having an extractor on those planets. So say an extractor here on the red one already, and you have an extractor over here. Then at any time um, while you have those, you can reveal this card and say, hey, I gain my two light for having my two extractors, which is really important, especially in a game where people are trying to gang up on the leader. You can feign a little bit like you don't have as many points as you normally would and reveal this card and be like, ha, I have two more, which is even more important when you go for yellow, then you would reveal this card and gain three light if you had at least control of three yellow planets. These are kind of like your de desert arid planets. And then you have your watery blue planets here. This basically you could reveal if you have at least four, then you would gain four light, of course, giving a big jump and surprise on your opponent if they didn't realize you're going for that objective. And then the extremely hard to pull off the green planets here. Um, this you can, if you have at least five green planets, you would gain five light. And that seems hard to do. And it actually is. But if you reveal this and are able to pull it off, five light is a quarter of the game, especially if you can look like you're coming from behind and be able to pull this out. And do note that majority of the planets in last light are green. And then red being the smallest one that you need is actually a little bit more rare for the red, the, the, the color. But the planets are all randomly set up at the beginning of the game. So you have to determine at the beginning of the game, which is best gonna suit your need, realizing that the board is going to be constantly rotating as the game goes along. So the planets that are in front of you at the beginning of the game will not be the planets that are at you at the right time. So you have to kind of anticipate where these planets are gonna be. So that's your planetary achievement, kind of like the, the planet type that your alien species likes. So you're gonna choose one of these and discard the other three for the setup of the game. The other thing I wanna talk about is your alien races. You're gonna be doing that getting two of them and choosing one of those aliens at the beginning of the game. Um, so you choose your one, and then after everybody has chose, these are all public information. Um, basically, everybody is going to read out what their alien race does. The Burleshans say, hey, you can play an extra trade, or whenever you play the trade action, you can take one additional of those. The 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 Yule Neal here, they basically start with an additional um, unresearched tech, and then they get to draw an extra when they're drawing. They don't get to keep extra, but they get to draw extra, so that way they can see more technology and do different stuff. These are just little special powers that you can start the game with um, to be able to have a different asymmetrical alien race. And when you have expansions and things like that, we have tons and tons of different aliens allowing you to have all sorts of mix up and different stuff in the game. Also, just for me, I like to put my resources that my faction currently has on my alien race there, just to sh kind of show all the players how much I have. And then I have my, my light that I currently have in the game either there or right beside my player board so players know where we are currently. Of course, the first player to 20 light wins. Whenever someone reaches 20 light, that will trigger the end of the game. You will finish that turn, so therefore everyone's actions when they are done, whoever has the most light will be the winner. If multiple players are tied for 20 light or above, then the person with the most technologies will win the game. If there is still a tie, whoever has the most resources will be declared the winner. And that is last light. 
All right, so hopefully that gets you enough information to get started with your first game of Last Light. Feel free when you're starting the game to go off a little bit slower with those action cards, making sure that everybody's doing the actions correctly as you go around the first round. But after the first round, I feel like you're definitely gonna have everything down. It's a very easy and intuitive game, and I try to make the game as accessible as possible to bring the 4X genre to more people out there. But do remember, the game is really quick, so make sure you're not staying too far behind or just hiding in your corner, or else the other players might grab that 20 light before you do and win the game. You definitely wanna be the first alien to grab that, so that way you're able to save your civilization and be the new superpower in the universe. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me here on this How to Play video. If you have any questions, make sure to leave those in the comments down below. Also, feel free to hit us up on Board Game Geek um, and ask us any questions there as well. There's a ton of people that are asking different stuff if you have any specific things you're hanging up on. But I do hope you enjoy the game and thank you so much for checking it out and playing it. I'm stoked for you to get it to the table with your friends and family. Anyway, I've been Roy Candy, the designer of this game, and I'll see you on the next one.